morning. So I'm out here with my brother Michael and we're just doing a couple different things. Wife and I took the forms off the outside of the foundation wall. What we're doing now is putting drain tile in. I have some gutter runs. There's one here, there's a gutter back there and a gutter back there uh, that I'm concerned about. I'm using the, the trench that we dug for the foundation. I'm using that same trench to run the drain tile out. And I've also gonna put three drains back here. So on that same gutter run, I'm putting drains. And then on the back side of the foundation here, in previous videos, I talked about form a drain and drain tile for the, how, how it's a drain tile for the foundation. And so I have a drain tile that ties into that and it's going to daylight out in the yard. That line is tied in with my garage floor drains and both lines, gutter, drain combination line and then the foundation drainage and the garage combination line are both going to run out and drain out um, underneath those trees. So Michael and I are just getting started. We're going to start uh, backfilling and uh, getting it buried. So that's what we're doing. Good morning. Um, I am out here at the building site and what I'm working on today is just kind of a little bit of dirt work of the house and uh, getting ready for material delivery. So what we've done up to this point is um, obviously we have previous videos going over site prep and footings and foundation and, uh, and the slab as well. <clears throat> but since we poured the slab, my wife and I uh, spent a day and we tore off the remaining concrete forms along the perimeter edge of the slab. And then uh, it was a couple day process of well, actually, actually it was just two days, but we spent a couple days backfilling. Um, we had to put this two and a half inch styrofoam uh, foam board insulation in to insulate the foundation. And then after that, um, just a little bit of dirt at a time. And then I rented a jumping jack compactor and just kind of go back and forth uh, after each layer of dirt to compact it. The reason why we focus so much on compaction next to the foundation is on many exterior sides of the, this house we have uh, concrete slabs and if there is any settling along that foundation where that trench was it could cause the concrete to be unsupported it'll crack and um, sink next to the house and, and slope towards the house and that's not what we want so on this project i have a patio that's going to extend nearly to the end of the garage behind the garage and then of course the concrete apron in front of the garage here and then i have a covered front patio for the front entryway so this is going to be a patio here as well and then just around the corner this is going to be a covered patio um, a large covered patio you can see the foundation uh, sino tubes i poured for the post supporting the, the overhang and then around this corner there won't be any concrete here, but then again, over on this wall will be another patio outside of the dining room, which is gonna be off this room here. In our case, we had to really focus on good compaction around the foundation. Today, um, I'm going to be kind of leveling out the dirt in front of the house at each of those patio areas, approximately close to what I need. So that way, um, over the winter, with moisture and freezing and thawing, uh, there will be settling and compaction of the subgrade and hopefully well the, the hope is that with the freezing and thawing and the moisture um, over the winter it will become a solid base for all of my concrete slabs on the exterior of the home so one reason i'm doing that is for the compaction second reason is i want a nice place to, to set materials and also just kind of a good working area around the perimeter of the house. Today I'm getting materials delivered uh, for the framing process and once I have everything smoothed out it'll be nice to be able to set the materials right close to where I need them so I'm not trekking them over long distances and then also should it rain or snow I'm, I'm not trekking material through great distances of mud and then transferring that mud onto the slab. The hope is to clean, keep the slab as clean as possible. As you can see, there's already a dirt on it. It's kind of a constant process of sweeping, but 
the cleaner the better in my in my opinion so that's what i'm going to be working on i have a laser transit that i'm going to be using to uh, set the grade that i would like so the further that i get away from the front of the house i do need to slope the subgrade accordingly because i do want the concrete patio to be sloping away from the house i'm kind of shooting for a quarter inch per foot as the the slope so it's kind of a spreading dirt driving over it to pack it down and, and a lot of jumping out and measuring with the transit stick see how close i am so that's what i'm doing My wife and son, Becca brought lunch for me, but I gotta get back after it because the delivery's not so far away. All right, so around each of these, these columns here, I'm using ground up concrete. I want a nice solid compaction because it's not just the dirt underneath that holds up this column, but also the friction of the dirt around the column gives it its uh, strength and stability. So using this ground up concrete, it packs really well. I'll use the end of the shovel to kind of pack it in there as I go. Some sand and dirt already fell in there from just moving dirt around in material and such. So I'm gonna pack that in there first. And then now, uh, again, use this to fill it in all the way. Just ground up concrete. Once it gets wet and then dries out, it is so, 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 like firm and good base. It's similar to sand. The smaller, the, the finer the material, the tighter it packs together. Um, just because there's no less air gaps. So, I've got three more, three of these to do. One I already did. When I backfill a trench, I kind of ran alongside it. I used the jumping jack compactor that I rented. The delivery guy called and said that he's gonna be here in about 30 minutes. I am not really close to finishing what I wanted to finish before he got here, so. All right, on to the next one. In time lapse for so you don't have to listen to me ramble. because the guy left his thingamajigger over there. And I don't know how many total there will be, but I think I've said this a lot already, but it is very exciting.
to conclude today's video. Josiah doesn't have a whole lot left. He's gonna probably do a little more dirt work, which isn't too exciting. And then t the exciting things are gonna be happening tomorrow when we start framing. So if you'd like to follow along on this whole journey of us building our house, then please be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.